Hi there, I'm Dr. Steven Soar, owner of the Source of Health Natural Medical Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. Today's topic is 10 things you should know about stem cell injections. You can visit me at my website at sohnatural.com for more information. Sports players, elderly, and young athletes all the like have received a lot of benefit from stem cell injections and other regenerative injection procedures. Kobe Bryant, Ray Lewis, Tiger Woods, just a few names in the professional world where they've been able to get back in the game faster, got a lot of results. Our first topic is that there's no ethical issues. Amniotic stem cells are derived from a consenting donor's uh, birth waste, so the afterbirth is placenta and the amnion. There is no fetal tissue, there's nothing uh, from the baby in this, so it really removes some of those concerns and the results are fantastic. We're showing a lot of uh, promise for sports injuries such as a rotator cuff, a degenerative joint diseases such as uh, hip arthritis where you're cons uh, concerned about getting a joint replacement, a lot of benefit for the knee as well, disc degeneration, uh, a lot of top surgeons are using these procedures as well when they do have to do surgery they can add in stem cells. But this is a fantastic procedure that does not involve surgery at all. Great response with tendinitis issues. It's being used in organ regeneration and also diabetic wounds or burn victims where they have a hard time healing. So what are stem cells? We kind of call them a blank slate. The stem cells that we're using are called multipotent, which means they can be whatever they need to be. So you have a stem cell here that can then differentiate into different cell lines. So the ones that we're focusing on are for structural issues. Chondrocytes make cartilage and osteoblasts build bone. But we also have some other features that a stem cell can turn into. So in this example of a knee, where you see that there's arthritis and there's some changes that are happening on this side of the knee on the medial uh, collateral side, uh, we have a lot of damage here and stem cells can actually go to this damaged area and create a great healing response. Stem cells actually create healing. Uh, a normal cortisone injection or a steroid shot actually turns off the healing. It turns down the pain and the inflammation making the patient feel better but at the same time we're not getting the person better and that's uh, kind of a short-sighted approach to true healthcare. Stem cells give people the ability to return back to the game. Whether this is the actual game for a sports player, they can get back in the game faster, but it's also for the everyday person, avoiding the need for surgery, downtime, or scars. Uh, it reduces time lost from work and life, as well as recreational activities, doing things that you love to do. That's what it's all about. So amniotic stem cells are not embryonic or cord from cord blood. So there's no destruction of, of the embryo and the fetus is not injured whatsoever during the harvesting process. Uh, amniotic stem cells are an intermediate between an embryonic and an adult stem cell. Adult stem cells have differentiated some, while embryonic stem cells are called pluripotent. And pluripotent stem cells have a tendency of turning into tumors. So we don't use that type at all. Amniotic stem cells have incredible potential. So out of the, all the solutions that we have to choose, amniotic stem cells are the strongest and most effective. Our starting solution is dextrose, which is a sugar, and we call it prolotherapy or proliferation therapy. It's used for minor aches and pains, and can be used to help a wide variety of conditions. PRP, platelet-rich plasma, is getting a lot of research and doing fantastic results, but this involves a, a blood draw where we're spitting down the, plate, the patient's blood and then re-injecting the platelets into there. And there's a lot of applications, and we do this here as well at the office. Two other therapies uh, that we have are bone marrow and fat-derived stem cells. Now these are adult stem cells that are harvested from the patient. Um, an extra procedure uh, for bone marrow is 
uh, making a simple drilling into the bone, pulling out the bone marrow, and then spinning it down. The uh, fat derived involves a liposuction. It's a mini liposuction, so you don't get a plastic surgery or reshaping of any sorts, but just to derive the stem cells. And the patient can be quite bruised and tender after that procedure. With amniotic stem cells, they come to our office, they're stored uh, cryogenically frozen, we thaw them out 15 minutes before you get there, and the injection is very quick and simple. The results are phenomenal. So in research, uh, PubMed is our official place where we, we find search results for peer-reviewed journal studies. Platelet rich plasma has had over 7,700 journal articles written on it alone, and the results are fantastic, releasing a lot of uh, growth factors, and you can uh, thumb through the research if you can't sleep at night. Human amniotic stem cells have also gained quite a bit of research, over 1,100 studies, and this is the focus of our talk today is with stem cells. Um, great results here, and it's even being used in uh, post-MI or myocardial infarctions to bring blood flow back to the uh, tissue of the heart after a heart attack. Here's a specific study investigating the difference between an amniotic derived stem cell compared to a bone marrow derived stem cell. And this is a horse study. A lot of the veterinarians are way more advanced with uh, medical procedures because there's less ethical issues. So we learn a lot from animal studies. And in this study with the horse's tendon, they noticed that there is a much better benefit between amniotic stem cells uh, more effective than the bone marrow. So great study on that. So here's a slide where we'll talk about what are amniotic derived stem cells. What's in this injection that we're putting into someone's joint or onto the tendon or ligament? So first of all, they're obtained from a consenting donor. So the expecting mother is screened. She's tested to make sure that she is a viable donor for this tissue. It's then harvested during the C-section and immediately transported to an FDA-registered lab where it's then again screened again to make sure there's no diseases such as HIV or any um, genetic abnormalities. Once it passes through this rigorous screening, it's then processed and put into a vial and then sent to us. It contains a high concentration of stem cells. Stem cells uh, will turn into whatever cell it needs to be like we said before. In addition, and what helps do that is collagen and having an extracellular matrix. I know that's a big word, but what that does is it creates a scaffolding for these cells to climb along and become what they need to be. Growth factors are little signaling hormones that communicate cell to cell that help to mediate inflammation, that help to transform the stem cells in what they need to be. Hyaluronic acid is used as a standalone for people with bone-on-bone -bone joint degeneration. So it acts as a lubricant fluid like WD-40 for your joints. Uh, Synvisc or rooster shots are common names for hyaluronic acid. The, the solution also has some antimicrobial properties which decreases any um, risk for infection. There's always a little bit of a risk with anything we do, but it does have antimicrobial properties. There's been over 10,000 procedures without any adverse reactions, and there's no rejection concern, which I mean, uh, the word here is immune privileged. So these cells do not express uh, an, a response to the immune system, so they're kind of neutral. They're like Switzerland. So they come in, set up the shop, and they start turning into whatever's damaged. We have excellent long-term outcomes. So you re reduce the need for expensive and painful joint replacements. That means there's no surgery, no scar, and no downtime or lost work. You go right back. The next day you might be a little bit tender, but that's it. This is groundbreaking for people with tendonitis issues, arthritis or joint issues, ligament injuries, and then so much more. Currently, we, there is a poor insurance, insurance coverage. 
Despite the excellent results with stem cell therapy, it is a new technology, and it takes years for an insurance company to start incorporating that and covering it. However, the benefits of stem cell rejuvenation therapy more than outweigh the cash cost of the procedure. And that value is in the reduced pain and suffering, less healing time, no scar or surgery, and then you're uh, left with more time for you to do what you want to do in your life, not worrying about this pain in your joint anymore. It's a very low risk procedure. This is our last point. It's an outpatient procedure. Typically less than 15 minutes. We don't use any put you under anesthesia. We use a local anesthetic or something topical just to numb for the needle prick and that's about it. Very few side effects if any. Uh, the enhanced outcomes are with physical therapy, rehabilitation exercises, improving someone's nutritional status, giving people the tools, the nutrients they need to heal on their own, and then hormone balance, looking at somebody's level of stress hormones versus their happy hormones where they're growing. So aging is really a balance between breaking down and building up. So we can help in that factor as well for helping people improve their outcomes. So I hope this has been a very informative and educational lecture for you. If you or anyone you know is suffering with joint pain, uh, please have them contact me. I'd love to offer you a free 15-minute consult. Our phone number at the office is 480-361-4005. Prolotherapy, regenerative medicine, and amniotic stem cells. It's worth a shot.